Alright, so I want to talk about the First Chronicles of Just a Legend, which is the sixth book in the Drenay Saga. I had actually intended to review uh, Wayland 2 in the Realm of the Wolf, but unfortunately I couldn't find a picture of it in time, so I'm just going to skip ahead and do this one. And you can see the picture of it from the one that I very lazily downloaded off of uh, Amazon. But anyways, uh, basically, quite obviously, this takes place before... Uh, Drust being the old man at Drust Elnock in Legend. Uh, now, this is an extremely good story where we finally have uh, Gamel actually expand quite a bit on the character and throw a lot more description and a little more character development into the background. He did this very briefly in, uh, in The Realm of the Wolf, but uh, not that much. All right. Uh, basically... The, si the book itself is actually divided up into four different uh, small chapters, like picture of Stephen King book, and we'll say, okay, uh, book one will be 80 pages, book two, 130, and so on. And here we get to see Druss from a young man living with his father in a village to about the time that his wife dies after a... Uh, after the demon is exercised from his axe, so let me go ahead and shoot off into the story. Alright. The story starts out with Druss, of course, as a young man, about 20, living in the village with his father and his newly wed wife, Rowena. Uh, Rowena is Druss's wife. Now, right off the bat, we're told straight up that Rowena is a seer or a person who can uh who can actually project her spirit out of her body and go and see things far off ahead and she has some precognitive abilities but she's kept it a secret from the dress for a long time uh she has the premonition that a slave caravan is on its way to the village to uh kidnap the women and this is a scenario that's quite often carried out in many of his books where young women are taken captive and Druss happens to be off at the time chopping logs with the uh, little lumber uh, business that he's working for. And he eventually learns that his wife has been taken because some raiders come up and trying to attack him. And he's already been established as having gotten into fights quite often in the story. Uh, the background of his family, uh, the Axe Snaga originally belonged to his grandfather, uh, who I want to say his name was Bress, uh, or it might be his father's name, but anyway, his grandfather carried the axe, and was basically, it was created by this old hag that uh, trapped a demon inside of it, and when it was given to Druss's grandfather, he was just a berserk madman, he was known as uh, a yeah, uh, his uh, grandfather's name is Barden. He was Barden the Butcher, Barden the Slayer. He he would kill everybody, and the axe just eventually drove him mad. But he was eventually brought down, uh, and his father took the axe and the gauntlets and all the uh, battle armor that his father had and stashed him away. And every time somebody would recognize him as being the son of this butcher, uh, he would have to take uh, his son, Druss, and move away. And... Druss's father is actually quite the opposite of what uh, Barton was. Uh, Bress is not really a pacifist per se, but he always believes in turning the other cheek and wanting to avoid fights. And Druss inherits a bad temper and, of course, is, uh, views his father as a weak man. And he's eventually uh, criticized quite heavily for this by uh, a character named Shadak, who he meets up with later, who helps him go to rescue his wife. Now, during the course of this story, from uh, the place where Druss lived to uh, a far-off nation called Nishan, Druss begins a quest to find his wife, and there are actually three or four points in the story where he comes extremely close to catching up with the guys and rescuing her, but something would always come up, and it would drag the story out. Uh, there are incredible chase scenes in this movie, uh, one where he eventually tracks down the guys who originally kidnapped her. There's a very cool sequence out at sea with him fighting a bunch of pirates alongside a bunch of allies he picked up that work for uh, King Bada, Bodison, not Bodison, uh, King Gorbin, 
who eventually goes mad because of a sword made for him by the same hag that made uh, Snaga. Now, Druff picks up Snaga and is tempted by the demon several times within there, but for some reason, he has a will to always fight off the bloodlust because he's able to, he can go berserk, but he's somehow able to discern uh, friends in the midst of the battle and also the enemies who throw down the weapons in front of him because he doesn't believe in killing unarmed men, even enemy soldiers. Uh, we also have a bit of a sidekick, so to speak, that's introduced in here that accompanies Druff's name, Sieben. Sieben is basically a freak. He's a little horn dog who basically goes and has a series of affairs that be with rich women, poor women, whores, uh, whatever it may be. Uh, basically, that guy just can't say no to the cat. But uh, now he's a poet, and his only fighting weapon of choice are about three or four throwing knives that he carries with him. And Druss has never really taken well to jokes. And Sieben is always just a smart ass who's throwing jokes out there. And the first time that they meet, uh, it, it looked like that those two wouldn't get along. But uh, eventually they wind up becoming the best of friends in this story. And the relationship between them as they travel and go on their series of adventures is uh, really one of the high points of this book. Now, this story is not without its share of tragedy. Um, Druss is completely naive about the ways of the world, and he goes out and discovers a lot of things. Uh, there, are, there is one point where he becomes a bare knuckle boxer, and he trains. And there's even one point where he's eventually forced to go into battle against uh, some of his allies and even kill one because he has to double cross uh, Gorbin in order to rescue his wife. Uh, we do have uh, quite a bit of supernatural in this too. There is a Really excellent fight scene involving uh, Druss and this bear demon that was summoned by the same hag. Uh, the sorceress who qu appears in quite a few books in the Drenay Saga is known as the Old Woman. Uh, she's the one that trapped the demon in the axe, and she would later go on to be known for making uh, the Swords of Night and Day for Skilganon. And I'll touch upon that in a later book. But uh, Eventually, Druss is forced to seek out her help in rescuing his wife's soul from uh, the void. And basically, he has to go and walk the... Uh, it's not really hell in the story, but he has to walk through the other side of it in order to rescue, or, uh, rescue his wife's soul and eventually comes face-to-face -face with uh, an enemy or an element of his past that poses one of the gardens or guardians keeping him from uh, Rowena. All in all, this is a very excellent story. Uh, there are some great battle scenes in here. Uh, actually, a lot more fleshed out character arcs for Druss, Sieben, Rowena, and there's really an element of tragedy in this story to where he goes and rescues Rowena that uh, is really a, a bit on the bad side, but you know, all in all, this still makes for a good story, and I highly recommend that you check this out if you're a Druss fan. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.